Hey folks, it's Fifth Guy here, how you doing? I have got this trailer, the Metal Tech one, on the back of the pickup. Now, I realise that this probably wouldn't happen all the time, but I have seen it being done in various videos and stuff, so I'm confident that we can do this. I don't think that realistically we could um, pull it away once it's full, but um, because it's empty at the moment, I think it's okay. So all I was going to do was pull the trailer over to here next to the combine, and then unhitch it again so that we can leave the trailer there the combine can then continue on and we can drive back down to our ramp to um carry things on there i have adjusted the ramp slightly so that we don't have the the issue in the gateway before we go any further my question for this week up here where we've got all these small fields of grass now i'm going to be buying cows that was the vote last week so we're going to be buying some cows fairly soon um, do you want me to do some of these fields up here with arable crops or do you want me to just do the grass up here in the small difficult to get to fields um, it's, it's quite difficult to get in and out of them these over here they're sort of just a long distance from the farm and um, these are much more difficult to get in and out of so it's going to be smaller machinery so do you want me to plow those up and do some crops on those or do you want me to just stick with the grass and do like the hay and the silage it will be used for the cows um, out of these fields although we're going to do silage bales on field 25 and we're going to take some of those bales over for the cows and sell some of the rest of them um, I did uh, it's your vote it's your game head in the comment section down below let us know which one you want and why and of course don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner now soil composition um, someone pointed out that these fields all need plowing yes they need plowing but at the moment everything is done as grass and I'm not I don't have any plans to actually um, plow up all of the grass fields and then replant them with grass um so we're just going to leave the fact that they've got the um the plowing thing on them um and completely ignore that and we'll only plow them up if we want to actually use the land for arable cropping um if you would like to support the channel you can head over to patreon there is a link in the description down below on every single video that i do and you can go over to my patreon channel um patreon page and take a look and support me if you would like to um i will be after a suggestion from someone actually a couple of people now have suggested it um up i'm going to be updating my um introduction video on all of my videos because several people have said now that it's a little bit loud um so i'll be updating it a little bit i uh, probably won't change the graphic i'll probably just change the sound a little bit and maybe do something with the um the subtitles the uh, the loot layer um link that is there at the moment i'm going to be removing that one they'll still include loot layer links in the descriptions of my videos it's a um website that is owned and run by a friend of mine that sells tabletop gaming paraphernalia so um like custom made dice dice trays and boxes and things like that so if you're into like Dungeons and Dragons and stuff that is the place to go and take a look um, there's all sorts of things you can see there but instead of having the link to that website on my intro video someone has suggested that I should just put a um, a link about Patreon and then I won't have to remember to tell you at the beginning of every video and like I said before I don't particularly like the idea of having to say every single time please go and um, look at patreon so that you can give me money if you want to um so i'll do it like that and then i won't have to say it at the beginning of the videos um so thank you for those people that suggested that i think that's a really good idea so that's what i'm going to be doing um updating my intro video has been on my to-do list for quite some time and i still haven't gotten around to it um i'm generally very very busy and snowed under with work and it's uh, quite difficult to get things to <laughs> find the time to do everything but hopefully very soon we'll be able to get that underway so anyway, um, I moved these ramps ever so slightly. I moved this one um, so the higher point is right in the gateway. So we don't have the issue with sort of standing on that anymore. We can get in and out on this end with no problem at all. You can see here the grass has been flattened slightly where I turned around. Um, we do have a bit of a gap in between them here. So I want to stick some wood chips in that gap to fill that up slightly. And then we want to put some wood chips here in the front to fill that bit up so we'll see how well this works out i'm not really sure what it's going to be like um you can't see that the wood chips you you sort of they they do squash down a little bit as well they, they do move around a tiny bit when you drive on them um which is a bit different to grain some people suggested i should try putting grain here but i think that responds differently to what wood chips would do so let's just try 
and tip this here. And once we've done, once we've got this ramp in place and everything here is ready, the next thing that we want to do is go and do some um, ploughing in field one. I want to start getting that. I want to do the ploughing in the middle. I want to see how that works out. Ploughing in the, um, you know, that piece in the middle where where we've cut these trees down. We've got some wood chips that are still in that field that we want to get rid of. As soon as we've got rid of those wood chips, we'll sell them at Sawmill because it's still on offer, actually. We still get, we could get some good money for those. Um, then we get the plough going in there. And once we've done the ploughing in there, then we want to start doing some mowing and baling over here. Now, I did suggest that perhaps I could use the Crone Big M. Now, I realise that is a monstrous great big machine to use on a map like this. But we could then do a single pass operation. So, um... Let me know in the comments if you would like me to bring the Chrome Big M onto this map. I realise that, you know, really we were looking at smaller machinery on this map. And the Chrome Big M is ridiculously oversized for a, a small scale farm. It, it doesn't really fit. And I am aware of that. Um, but at the same time, I still thought it could be pretty cool to have something like that do all of our mowing and stuff. Right. Now we've got to try and find... You ca Unfortunately, you can't sort of drag it back very well, he says, as he drags it back. Okay, so maybe you can drag it back a bit. Right, it's getting a little better. We need, I think, a bit more up at the front. Um, and then I think we want to take a bucket full and put it up on the, the dip in between the two. I'm hoping that one trailer load will be enough, and then we can use our remaining wood chips for um, making money get a little bit of cash because the plow is going to cost us a bit of money and I'm not sure to be honest that we can afford to buy a plow at the moment I think what we're going to have to do is lease the plow and then come back later on and buy it right we're going to need to go up to the combine in a second and unblock it it will have gotten to the trees in the middle that's what the issue there would be now that gap in the middle is it going to go I, I got a feeling because you can use the camera Use this camera mod, and it should... Right. This is a difficult... I'll tell you what, if we go forward, go across here, I should then be able to see... Right, those wood chips, it does look like the wood chips are going inside the wall. So we might have to make a fair heap up the top there in order to get them to sort of spread out properly. But that heap there does seem to hold us up. Let's go back over to the combine, and get it unstuck. It'll be the group of trees in the middle that it's stuck on. I was right. It's driven in right into the middle of this group of trees, but what we can do is if we just combine around the edge of the trees a second, we can then um, leave it go and it'll do the rest of it. Or it should do, in theory. So let's come around this side. It's actually, because it's so well centred, it's done alright with it, I think. Although I'm a little bit disappointed with the AI helper that it drove right into the middle of that um, stand of trees. I thought that it would have sort of tried to go round the outside of the trees. So it's a little bit disappointing that it does that, but now I guess we'd sort of we'd have to expect it really. What we're gonna what's really because we're not gonna really test it on this map, and we're not really gonna be able to test it on Rattlesnake Valley map. But after Rattlesnake Valley time lapse, we'll be moving to Sandy Bay. That's the that's the plan for the next map. All right, I told you this quite a while ago. I would like to go to Sandy Bay next. I always said in FS15 that the one thing I regretted about FS15 was not doing a time lapse on Sandy Bay. And so Sandy Bay is back. So I will be doing a time lapse on there. Um, and some of the fields in Sandy Bay, I think it depends if there are collisions on. Um, the objects in the middle of the fields because some of the fields did have telegraph poles and stuff in the middle of them and I don't know if they still have that or not if they do still have that right let's just turn the AI on that should carry on if they do still have the telegraph poles with collisions then we could really test out um, the capabilities of the AI vehicle extension I suspect what we'll have to do is sort of cut the field in half along the telegraph poles and then do that bit manually but we'll see that's um, not for quite some time yet because we're only on episode 11 of the of Rattlesnake Valley at the moment. We've got a little way to go before we move to Sandy Bay. I'll leave this combine just to finish up here. We'll go back over and carry on playing around with those wood chips a minute, I think. I've uh, got another bucket full here and we'll see how well it starts to fill up this gap. 
not all that well. I think that we're going to end up having to... Yeah, see, because it's piling it inside the ramp, the ramp doesn't seem to have collision for piles of stuff, except for... Um, well, it doesn't seem to have collision against the sides for the, the, the mountains of um, stuff. So the what you pour sort of falls through it, whereas um, the... The, the vehicles drive over the top, so you, you, you tip stuff out and that f falls through it, but then the vehicles stay on top. I don't quite know how that works. I'm not sure of the exact mechanics of the game that are causing it to do that, but it could actually end up being a bit of a nuisance because what we're going to end up having to do here is go and get a load more wood chips. And I don't really want to have to do that. I was hoping to sell some. I might come back a little bit, maybe. What's it doing? Is it, no, see... See where it's dropping them? It's actually... I've moved the heat back quite a long way. I had a bit of a lag spike there. I'm hoping that's the combine that's doing that. Oops. Okay, I've just dragged wood chips everywhere because I had the um, the bucket lowered down. Right, last little bit. I got a feeling that we're just going to have to sort of live with a great big lump in the middle. Either that or we try a different approach. And sort of try and drop something in there. Maybe we could... Oh, maybe we could go and get a couple of the small bales. If we could get a couple of the small bales and drop them in there and sort of sit them on top, that might work. I don't know how well the vehicles would drive over the top of the small bales, but it might, might work. I'm not saying it will. I'm saying it might. There is a chance that we could yet rescue this and turn it round, and that is lagging big time right there. I don't know why it's causing it to lag. It might be because of the, the way that the ramps work. This is bad. Oh, I was hoping that it wouldn't do this. That's why I've, I kind of left the... Partly I left the um, the gap in the middle there because of that. But also because... Um, if you moved it forward, it ended up going up too high. It lifted the, the height of the ramp a long way. Right. That sort of works there. And then this bit here... You end up with a big dip. Hmm. Ultimately, this is disappointing to me. I think what we're going to do is we're going to head back down to the field. We're going to have to just bring the rest of the wood chips up here, I think. And we're going to spread those around as well. Um, how can I... I want to just tidy this up a little bit. This, um, this isn't quite satisfactory to me. If I do that and then lift... What's that done? That's, that's just made it more difficult because it's... Um, put a bit of a, a hump there I started out so well I was doing really good I thought I was doing really well with this it was going to be such a brilliant little project we were going to have a ramp here it was going to be really easy just throw a few wood chips down and once again everything has um, turned out pear shaped look see tiny little bit there that is just not letting us get past if I can actually maybe I can take a little shave of wood chips off of this bit not enough. Lower it down a bit more. There we go. Right. Take those there. Come back over. And onto this side. Tip those few just right on top there. Is that going to be enough? That might help. Right. We can get up and down that ramp. It's not easy. It's, n it's definitely not the easiest task, but we can do it. So we want to head back down to our field um, and load up another trailer load of wood chips. I think, rather than trying to mess around with bales, I think I will just bring the trailer back up here and just tip it directly up on the top and hope that that sort of falls into the middle. That's the plan, anyway. So if I get that one there, I'll tell you what, I will meet you back over the field where the wood chips are. We can get the rest of them loaded into the trailer and then get them back up here. The combine is finished, so I also need to go and grab the grain and everything from over there which i'll probably do that after this episode is finished actually i don't think we need to worry about that now the combine can be returned along with the um the trailer because we're not going to be using that again for quite a while and that's on lease so i'll actually order that up now we get that returned so if i go to garage we've got several items there with the combine that we had um i want to return that one okay return that one yes and i want to return that one there yes right those three are all returned back out i will keep that trailer though 
the um, the metal tech trailer. I think that might be useful for some other things. And the leasing costs on tra on the trailer aren't going to be all that expensive. Right, I will see you over in the field one so that we can load these, uh, the rest of these wood chips. I uh, almost finished loading up this load. As soon as it's done, I'm not going to bother taking the bucket back up to the top. We'll just run the trailer up. We'll get it up on top of the ramp and tip it right in between the two. And that should, in theory, finish off the ramp. And then we can come back down here with the trailer, load the last of the wood chips in if we don't quite get them all into this trailer and run those over to the sawmill. I, I don't know if we're going to be able to get all of these in because there's actually quite a few wood chips here. Um, done several bucketfuls now and I've got a feeling that we're going to end up with another part trailer load as well which is actually pretty impressive considering that we only chopped up two trees. Those trailers are 21,000 litres each so that's two full trailer loads out of those trees um, plus whatever else we have. Now, I think that the sawdust, um, the sawdust mod, you know, the one where we get the extra wood chips generated by, um, using the chainsaw, um, or any, any, anything that sort of cuts the trees up. I think that has contributed to the additional wood chips that we've got here. Um, but still, it's very impressive that two trees have managed to generate I would guess with what we got there, we got at least another bucket full and another uh, another bit as well. So close to 50,000 litres of wood chips for just two trees. That's pretty good. That is pretty good, I would say. Um, here, we're going to, as soon as we've cleared the wood chips and we've done the ramp, the next task is we're getting the plough and we are going to plough this bit up. I think that we are going to regret this decision because some of those bits there are actually quite steep. When you think about it there's like along here it's not that bad um but there are points on here that are particularly steep and i think it's going to make it very very difficult i think that the um the fence our nice blue fence that we've got i think that one will cope just fine with doing it and that'll be able to drag just about anything up it's a very very powerful tractor but i think when we come to doing the combining i think the combines are going to really struggle to cut everything through there neatly and cleanly but we'll have to wait and see once we finish doing the ploughing we can set something planting seed or something like that in there um, so that we can get a good sort of feel for how things are going to progress I'll meet you up at the ramp and we can tip these out so that we can just sort of finish that little bit off and then we can go and get a plough this hill really does make this tractor grunt a bit this little T6 but it's getting there we're almost up the top um, I was just thinking about that field over there. It's particularly steep. And I'm now thinking that perhaps we won't use the Crone Big M in there. Um, considering we're supposed to be using smaller machinery in here anyway. We're going to be using the um, the Fent, which is quite a big tractor. Uh, we'll put twin wheels on it for added stability on the hill. And we will then, with the twin wheels, go and mow the entire field. We will then go over the field with the Lintrack. Um, with the twin wheels on for raking it all up and then go back to the fence with twin wheels and um, bale it up with the bale wrapper combo. Um, I'm thinking that this is the best way forward because if we try to... Is that going to even... That's not even thinking about it, is it? What a complete and utter waste of wood chips this has been. Look at that. If you look in here, you'll see, yeah. Actually, the, the bulk of the pile is actually underneath the ramp. It's further back, not where I was tipping. Ultimately, this little exercise here has been very disappointing. I've just wasted all of those wood chips. And I've not actually made any difference whatsoever to that gateway. Uh, I think we're just going to have to leave it. I don't really want to bring the rest of the wood chips up because it's not going to make any significant impact on it, is it? That, so, yeah, you can do it, but it does look like you need a phenomenal amount of wood chips to be able to make it work. We can get across that ramp. It's not perfect, but we can do it. And then we've got the wood chips on the front, which actually have made a difference. Um, we are able to get up and down that ramp because of those wood chips that we've placed on there. So we can get through there. Um, but generally speaking, that seems to be a complete and utter waste. Look how far it's spread. And it's not... It hasn't raised the level of it at all. That's, that's absolutely awful, that is. 
And there's the bulk of the... There is the bulk of it. You, you look in here. You go forward just a tiny bit. There is the bulk of the wood chips. I think maybe two more trailer loads would actually do it. But I don't think we've got enough. And I'd rather just to get at least a little bit of money from what we got left. So I will go down. I will load those up. We can sell those few. And then we can get to the dealership and we can buy ourselves a brand new plough to go on to the vent. I think that's all the rest of the wood chips. Um, two and a bit bucketfuls. Well, almost two and a bit bucketfuls, I think. I can't exactly remember how many I had in each bucket. Um, so, yes, ultimately I think that we shouldn't have bothered using the wood chips up in the middle of that thing at the top there. In the in those ramps. I think that we've wasted an entire trailer load of wood chips. Um, we could sell the ramps, re uh, load the wood chips back up. Um, replace the ramps and then sell the trailer load of wood chips I don't think it's going to be worth all that time and effort if we just take a quick look at the prices here so at the moment wood chips are on offer we're getting $395 per thousand litres so if we were to do that sell those ramps buy them again um, and first load everything up up there and then bring it back down and sell it um, at $400 per thousand litres uh, for eight we would get $8,800 roughly. Roughly 8000 So, yeah. And then if you take into account the cost of the, the ramps and everything, looking at about eight grand. $8,000 is... Yeah, it's, it is a bit of money. But at the same time, I'm not sure that it's worth the bother. Um, the, the time and the effort. Now, is that the actual sell point for the wood chips or do we take them over there? You know, I don't know. Let me just back up here. We should... If, we, if it, this is the point here we'll get a um a tip point thing won't we um we don't want to use the tip anywhere we want to just do a regular tipping thing oh we do get it right there so we back it into there we sell it we make a little bit of money 2722 for 6000 liters so yeah it's, it would be uh about 8 grand i don't think it's worth 8 grand for um the effort of going in cleaning all of that lot up again so we've we've had a look at it we've seen how whether or not it would work i think that it was worth doing just to see if it worked we've got the front of the ramp that's worked well the wood chips on the front bit it's just a shame that the the ramps themselves don't have the collision on them so that um it would stop things from um like sliding in between them i think that that was that was kind of the point that's let us down on that um and maybe i should have just moved the ramps a little bit closer or something like that and it would have worked a little bit better um, who knows? I probably sh I probably should go up and do something up there, but I don't want to be messing around with it anymore. Um, I've, I've had about enough of those ramps up there now. They've, I've, I'm, I'm singularly disappointed with everything that's happened up there. It's, it's really let me down. Anyway, on more interesting matters, let's take this tractor here, absolutely caked in filth at the moment, um, and run up to the dealership get a brand new lemkin plow and bring it back down here and we might even be able to just break ground just um to start with and start plowing up some of those ridges in the middle once we have going all over the place here once we've st um sort of plowed up that little bit we can let the tractor carry on and plow up the rest of the field by itself um because we then need to get on actually saying that um, we need this tractor to do the ploughing and we need this tractor to do the mowing up at the top. So, um, yeah, we're, we're sort of going to be split between the two. I was also thinking of getting a, um, getting the man TGS truck that everybody wanted, and but getting it on lease rather than buying it, because I don't think we're going to have the money to buy it anytime soon. So if we were to lease it, we could use that for running a few things around um, and getting a bit more money so that we can then be in a position to start doing the silage. Um, I'll have a think about that between now and next week. But anyway, I'll meet with the dealership and get our plow. Right, I have leased this one for $4,720 because it's $57,000 to buy new and we don't currently have $57,000. So we have ourselves, what is this? Is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine furrow reversible plow, which is quite a beast of a plow, actually. This is an absolute monster of a plow. I've seen plows being used. Um, about this size and the tractors that were pulling them um, it was actually a John Deere 80 oh, I can't remember I think it's like a John Deere 8930 or something like that um, it wasn't an articulated one it was one of the bigger um, 
rigid body John Deere's. You don't get a lot of articulated tractors here in the UK. Um, it's, um, it's, it's actually quite unusual to see articulated tractors here in the UK. I mean, you do get them, like the Case Quad tracks and things like that. Um, but generally speaking, most of the tractors are the rigid body design tractors. Um, and this John Deere was one of the largest on the market with the rigid body design. Um, not an articulated, but I'm not going to be able to get past there before that car turns up, am I? Let's just um, bide my time and be a little bit patient. I could always go on the grass and go past. No, let's, let's, let's pass them on the road. Um, and yes, this tractor it was ploughing in the rain and ploughing up and down this hill. And the wheels on the tractor, they actually, the, the metal rims on the insides of the tyres, um, they spun. They turned and the actual um, tyres themselves and the plough and everything else just stayed still. So, um, yeah, so you look there, where, where the actual metal is, that was turning round, whereas the, the rubber itself stayed still. Of course, that rips out all of the um, uh, the valves and everything off of the wheels, um, and they all went down, and they had to be replaced. So, the um, company come out and mended all the tyres, the, the, um, the tyre people, I, I don't know who it was, um, come out and repaired all the tyres, and then... Um, he carried on again and it was still raining still horrible horrible weather and after a little while the same thing happened again it was within 24 hours he had exactly the same thing happen again it never happened before but it did on this one he had a new plow um it was much bigger than his last plow and so yeah it, it happened again and so this time the estate decided it was probably better if they forked out a pile of cash let's lower that one down and we want to go uh, allow or create fields is why. Um, yeah, the, the estate decided after that that it'd probably be better to pay for new tyres. And you get special ones that, yeah, see, look at that. We're going to have our work cut out to make all of this field ploughed up around here. This, this is going to be quite interesting to do, I think. Um, they spent a fortune to get specially designed wheels and tyres that have got um, like little bits of metal that stick out into the tyre, into the rubber, to stop them from spinning around. Um, and that worked perfectly. Once, once those had been installed, it worked absolutely perfect. He didn't have any trouble with it after that. But he did notice that the points where he thought that it would have happened again, when the tractor it really, really would strain and struggle at certain points, um, when under heavy load going up hills when it was raining with a heavy clay soil uh, and he he reckoned that it was fairly likely that the tractor would have done it that the wheels would have done it again on the tractor um, if he hadn't had those special tires installed so yeah you can have an incredibly powerful tractor on a big plow and the tractor itself has got the power to pull the plow but the rest of the tractor may not have quite caught up to being able to do it all. And I just found that really fascinating, the fact that even the best tractor still can't quite cope with it. It's a bit rough here, isn't it? Hmm. I don't know what it's going to be like when we um, finish doing our plowing, but we can get down through here. So yeah, our tractor here is powerful enough to pull everything. It's just, is the rest of the machinery able to cope with this job as well as the tractor? We shall see. Right. I'm going to carry on doing a little bit of this, and... Um, well, actually, we'll, we'll, do, we'll, we'll be doing most of this next week. In next week's episode, we'll, we'll carry on and do a lot of this. Um, my question for this week, let me just uh, bring up the map back through here. Oop, too far. Yeah, my question for this week, I've got, there's several fields up here that are like, really difficult to get into. Um, very tight access on the gates and everything. Do you want me to do grass crops up here? Do you have some hay and that for the cows? and uh, cut some of the fresh grass up here as well for the cows and take it in there or would you like me to perhaps plow up a couple of these fields and do some arable crops in the ones that are really difficult to get in and out of it's your vote it's your game head in the comment section down below let us know which one you want and why and of course don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner if you've enjoyed this episode please head down below and give me a like and if you really enjoyed it then please tell your friends all about me get them to come and watch as well that would be awesome that plow is going all over the place. Um, I will have to tell you about uh, plowing in uh, fields with like steep valleys in them uh, next time because it produces some very interesting and different looking results. But uh, that, that'll have to be next time. 
Um, so yeah, until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.